North Park and welcome to our Good Friday service. It is so good to have you joining with us virtually from wherever you are. We just want you to worship with us today and just be able to celebrate this day that we are given. As we begin the service, I'd like to begin with a time of prayer. Please join me as we go to the throne of God. Father, we just want to thank you, dear God, for you are good, Lord. Dear God, we are so blessed, dear God, to have the opportunity to lift you up and to give you glory, honor, and praise, dear God. No matter what the situation or the circumstance, you are worthy to be praised. And today we want to worship you freely, dear God. We want to be able to lift up and lift our hands and our voices to you, Lord. I pray, dear God, that you will be in every part of this service, dear God, and that your peace People will not leave the same way that they came, Lord. That they will leave, dear God, filled with you, dear God. They will leave filled with hope, dear God. They will leave filled with peace, dear God. And that they will get to know you more and draw closer to you, God. We ask these things in your name. Amen. The song says, there is power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. We know that we have been blessed this Good Friday because we have experienced the power of the blood of the Lamb. And we're going to experience that wonder-working power as we continue to go forth in the days ahead. Join me as we sing. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There is wonder working power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power. Working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There is wonder working power in the blood. Wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power. Wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. In the precious blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah! There's power in His blood. Wonder-working power. That power is going to take us through. It's going to carry us through. It is going to do wondrous things. We are so grateful that we have access to that. We have access to it because of his extravagant love. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through to 7, 8. Sorry, read as follows. For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Because of his extravagant love, we are able to receive that gift of forgiveness from sin. Because of his extravagant love, he sent his son to come down and die for a sinner like me and you. Because of his extravagant love, we are going to be able to celebrate this victory. He is so
least your friend is intoxicating in the secret place. So Good morning, North Park family, and everyone else who is joining us from wherever you are joining us around the world, we encourage you to uh, enjoy the service. This is Easter, it is Good Friday, and we thank you for tuning in to this service. On Sunday, we will be having communion virtually, as we are not able to meet physically, so we're encouraging you to uh, participate as we celebrate Holy Communion in the presence of the Lord. So we're inviting you to use what you have at home, crackers, bread, grape juice, apple juice, orange juice, whatever you have, uh, that will be okay as we uh, celebrate Holy Communion together. Today we are celebrating uh, the the. the death of our Lord, as is customary, on Good Friday we will meet. So please bow your head with me. My name is Pastor Fitzroy Matthews, and let us pray together as we hear from the word. Father, we are so grateful. We thank you this morning. We thank you for another time that we are entering your presence. We pray that your word will go with power and authority for those who will hear they will uh, hear your word. They will allow the Holy Spirit 
uh, to enter into their lives and transform their hearts. We pray that, Father, you will allow your word to go where you send it and accomplish that which you please. We thank you in Jesus' name. Please turn with me in your Bibles to the book of St. Mark, Mark's Gospel, chapter 15. We will read from verse 21 to verse 39. Reading from the ESV translation. And they compelled a passerby Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right hand and one on his left. And they who passed by deride him, wagging their hands and saying, Ah, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it says, Behold, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud voice, cried and breathed his last. And the sentence, and, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that it was this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the Son of God. It is Easter again. And here we are as we reflect and remember the sacrifice that the Son of God made when he went to the cross over 2,000 years ago to lay down his life for the sins of the world. It is only Good Friday. And for those who are familiar with the story, we know traditionally this day is called Good Friday. This is why we are having this special service. Traditionally, we do so each year. All around the world, Christians come together to celebrate Easter it is a time when the world recognizes this as the holiest time on the Christian calendar as we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. I can recall as a child growing up back when I was young, Easter comes around, it feels different and than any other time is in the year. There seems to be a certain calm as people are getting ready to start their day. And the first thing on Easter or Good Friday was going to church. Even though I was young then and did not fully understand the significance of everything that was going on, what the days hold, we know it was a special time as people took the time to reflect as the world paused to remember the Savior who was crucified to forgive us of our sins so that we could have right relationship with God, which was a, a great cause to God the Father. As I got older, I am learning that this is something that we all need to keep hold in our minds. 
and do not allow the things that we encounter in our lives to distract us from the truth, but will hold us up as we give thanks to God as we reflect each year at this time. We do not allow the distraction that we see around us so that we would forget the purpose why we celebrate Easter. In reflecting on Easter this year, I am reminded that even though this should be a sad time for all the suffering and the pain that our Lord has gone through, this is something that we, this is something that He has to undergo for our sake. And we were, we were destined to die. But because he wants us to have right relationship with God, he took our place. Yes, it should be a sad occasion. But the truth is we rejoice that our Savior has come and has brought liberty to our lives so that we can give worship to God. As I reflect on the story of Easter, I am reminded that the time, from the time that Jesus enters the world, the devil was working overtime to take him out, trying to stop the plan of God. But let me remind us that nothing that the enemy does is able to overthrow the plan and the purpose that God has for us. We see Jesus as a baby as he grew up under the protection of God. Even when the enemy was trying to take him out, God miraculously kept him alive through the young years. And it was only when he was ready to go to the cross that we see the plot thickens and came to fruition against his life. He chose the disciples to mentor them and empower them to carry on the work when his task was finished here on earth. And even though they did not count themselves worthy to carry on after Jesus, Jesus died and went back to the Father and God empowers them and given them the ability to overcome so that they would be able to preach the gospel with boldness. And so you and I today, we are also re recipient of this grace. God the Father has empowered us even as he empowered the, the dis disciples by the Holy Spirit. And has given us the ability to continue to do the work of ministry as we partner with him in this 21st century. Many have thought that you would not make it this far. But here you are today. You are still standing. Do I have a witness uh, to know that you shouldn't be here today but God? Can I testify a little bit? For the devil had, had made threats. He had plotted. He has designed scheme many times over. But thank God I am still standing. I am still here today. Can I tell you that has it not been for the goodness of God, nothing I have done all this year would have kept me, but God is my defender. Listen what the psalmist says. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh and my adversaries and my foes, it is they who will stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war will rise against me, yet I will be confident. Psalm 27 verse 1 to 3. The text tells us as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held consultation with the elders and the scribes, the whole council, and they bound Jesus, led him away, 
and delivered him over to Pilate. Verse 1 of the text. I told you before that the enemy was working over time to take out our Lord. But now the time has come. God is going to use sinful and evil men to carry out his will and purpose. And although they thought they were doing what they were doing all on their own, little did they know is that God was behind the scene. He was carrying out his purpose. He was using them to do the work. And though they were plotting against Jesus, God's plan was about to be fulfilled because he will get the glory and no one else. Remember Jesus was always making it known to his disciples. When he, when he was here, he was only here for a short time, he told them. He was going to die to save his people from their sins. Matthew, in his account of the gospel, tells us when Jesus has finished all these things, he says to the disciples, you know that after two days, the Passover will, will come and the Son of Man must be delivered up to be crucified the chief priests and the elders of the people they gather in the place of the high with the high priest whose name was Caiaphas he was well aware that his time was near he had just celebrated we have just celebrated Palm Sunday when the Lord came into the city for the last time the scripture says riding on a donkey as the prophet Zechariah told us most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road the crowd went before him and those who followed shout Hosanna to the son of David blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna to the highest when he entered Jerusalem the whole city the scripture says was stirred up and the question was asked who is this and the crowd said this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee Matthew 21 verse 8 to 11 and now it is Friday the same people who uh, were calling for him uh, to crown him king and said Hosanna to the highest uh, their eyes were fastened upon him Simon said <coughs> Their eyes were fastened upon him and they wanted to uh, exalt him as the king. Uh, yes, but a few days later, the same people who were shouting Hosanna to the son of David, they were now saying, crucify him. This is what the scripture tells us as the prophet Isaiah write, he was despised and rejected. He was a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. As one from whom men has hid their faces, he was despised and we esteem him not. Isaiah 53 and verse 3. And so the people asked for Barabbas. They shout crucify him. Uh, and still the scripture says he was silent as the prophet told us. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that was led to the slaughter. Like a sheep before a shearer is silent. So he opened not his mouth. Isaiah 53 and verse 7. The Jewish leaders, all of the religious leaders, along with the Roman government, collaborated uh, to get rid of Jesus, uh, to protect their, pre their place of prestige and power. But little did they know it was God who was bringing about to pass what his plan was before the foundation of the world. It was now the right time, as Paul tells us in Galatians. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that he might receive, we might receive the adoptions of son. Galatians 4, verse 4 and 5. All the charges that they had brought against our Lord, they were false. But still the people asked for Barabbas. The scripture says, and he answered them saying, Do you want me to release uh, who the king of the Jews? 
For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priest had delivered him. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas instead. And Pilate again asked them, Then what will I do with the man who is called the king of the Jews? Yes, for the inscription that they placed above his head, the scripture says, uh, said that he is the king of the Jews. Today, yes, he is the king of the Jews, but also he is king of all the earth. And they cried again, crucify him. And Pilate says then, what, what evil has he done? But they shout the more, crucify him and so Pilate the scripture says washed his hand and, the, and, and, and to satisfy the crowd and then he released to them Barabbas having scourged Jesus and delivered him up to be crucified then they led him away the scripture says to Calvary as we read and they compared Simon of Cyrene who was coming from the country with the father the father of Alexander and Rufus to carry his cross by this time because Jesus was may have lost so much of his strength because of the scourging that was placed upon him he was now weak to the point where he wasn't able to lift up the cross and so they compelled Simon to carry the cross and they brought him to a place called Golgotha which means the place of the skull and when the sixth hour had come there was darkness over the whole land to the ninth hour oh yes from noon the scripture says the sun became dark to the point where it was like midnight because the son of man was about to lay down his life the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice Eloi Eloi lama sabachthani which means my God my God why has you forsaken me and some of the bystanders hearing him says behold he is calling for Elijah yes he was under the pressure and the agony of the sins of the world yes and the scripture says when the centurion stood facing him saw that it was the way he breathed his last he says truly this man was the son of God let me say to everyone who is listening or watching I want to remind us today it's Good Friday yes the Lord was nailed to the cross but Sunday is coming for Jesus says to the disciples he was going to die but on the third day he was going to rise from the dead if you're not a Christian I want to let you know today that Jesus died for your sin wherever you are whatever you have done no matter what your present situation or condition is you are not being disqualified because you can still receive the abundance of his grace his love extend to you as well as long as you are willing to submit your life to him he will accept you just as you are he will forgive you in every situation that you have been in he will change your life for the better he will change your life for good and he will give you life that is everlasting why will you die when there is life it, eternal in Jesus Christ why would you die when you can experience the power of his grace even now it is available to everyone who would come to him this is an open invitation for anyone who would come and accept him as our Lord and our Savior. Like the thieves, the scripture says, who were crucified with him. They were guilty, uh, yes, for the crimes that they have committed. And rightly so, for they were condemned to die. And, and even while he was dying on the cross, he was still forgiven sins. For the scripture says, one 
for criminal uh, who were having uh, a riot against him saying uh, you are you are not the Christ uh, save us uh, you who are the Christ not save us and save yourself uh, but they had a rebuke him saying do you not fear God uh, since you are under the same sentence uh, and condemnation uh, and indeed uh, trust me for we will receive due reward uh, for our deed but this man uh, had done nothing wrong uh, all the scripture reminds us uh, as the prophet told us uh, that he was numbered with the transgressors uh, yes uh, the dying thief the writer said uh, rejoice to see uh, the fountain uh, in his day yes Jesus Christ uh, died on the cross uh, but even while he was dying uh, he was saying to the, the thief that was hanging beside him uh, remember uh, the thief said uh, remember me uh, when you come uh, into your kingdom uh, Jesus says to him uh, truly I say to you uh, today you will be with me in paradise uh, Luke 23 verse 39 to 43 may I invite you today uh, if you are listening to this sermon uh, and you have not come to faith uh, in Jesus Christ uh, I would love for you to pray uh, for uh, forgiveness today uh, and pray that God uh, will enter into your life uh, and receive eternal life that is come through knowing our Lord and our Savior. Let me encourage the believers as we reflect that we continue to hold on to the, the God who never changes. We are living in difficult times. We are living in troubled times. And the uncertainties of this life uh, is overwhelming at times. Uh, but if we trust in the God uh, who is faithful, uh, he promised uh, that he will always be with us. Uh, yes, the disciples uh, became uh, put to a place uh, of indecision uh, where they themselves uh, saw their master crucified uh, and they all ran away from him uh, uh, for their life. Uh, but the scripture says uh, that Sunday is coming uh, for it's only Good Friday uh, after three days uh, he will rise uh, from the dead so let me encourage you uh, that you will hold on uh, to the Lord uh, the one who never change we do not worry about the future because we have a God who will hold us and keep us in the palm of his hands. And even though we see uncertainties all around us. The, the, the things that are unseen. That we do not know about. We hold to the fact that we have the victory. In the name of Jesus. We have the victory. In the name of Jesus. Let's bow our heads together. As we pray. And ask the Lord into your hearts and your lives if you want to not know him as Savior. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. We thank you this morning for the gift of life. We thank you that you laid down your life. You suffered, you bled, you died so that we could have life. I pray for everyone who is listening, who is watching that do not know you as their Lord and Savior, that they might experience the power of your grace. I, I pray that you, O oh God, will come into their hearts. Allow the Holy Spirit to transform them and to make them uh, more like you. As they pray today, I ask you for forgiveness. May they experience the power of your grace. And that Father, as they said yes, to your will submitting and surrendering their lives to you like you said to the thief today you shall be with me in paradise their lives will be transformed and their their hearts will be changed and the kingdom will be theirs minister to them we pray continue to minister to us as your people and help us as we continue to focus on you trusting you believing you that even though we face uncertain times we know that our future is bright and we are secure in you. So minister to us. We give you thanks. We give you praise. And we glorify your name. 
In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We want to thank you for joining us today as we celebrate Good Friday, thanking the Lord for saving us, for laying down his life for us. And for those of you who have listened and have not known the Lord as your Savior, we are going to invite, as we have prayed, that you have invited him in your hearts, that you will submit and to surrender your life. The kingdom is yours. And so...